We're here at Chefs and Champagne here at Wolfer, and I'm with, I'll say, two of the most important people of the evening, Susan Ongaro, who's president of the James Beard Foundation, and our honoree, Mr. John Besh. Just a poor cook and bottle washer from New Orleans. Yeah, well, yeah sure. If that's where it started, yeah. it's not there right now. Yeah. What a great evening. This is spectacular, isn't it, Susan? Yes. You know, this is our 26th chefs and champagne here in the Hamptons and you know John chef John Besh is really a great friend of the foundation but also one of the most admired chefs in America James Beard award winner multiple times but I think what's really important is the legacy of this is that for 26 years now we've honored some of the great culinary stars Julia Child Wolfgang Puck Emeril one of your friends from New Orleans uh, last year Carla Hall but I think what's even more special is that this is a party with a purpose we're raising money for our foundation and I'll let John tell you a little bit about his foundation, and for scholarship and educational programming. So to have over 40 chefs show up in your honor and, in, in the, and to help our foundation raise money is just a spectacular party with a purpose. Wow. John, what an honor it is. You're in great company. No, and Susan's too kind, and I'm too humbled by just when I, when I started to research how many people or who had been honored in the past, it's just in, in Julia Child and Jacques Pepin, and Emeril, and just the greats and these icons in the business, I'm thinking, I am so touched and honored to be a part of this. And the fact is, is that we're talking about scholarship. We're talking about using food to do good. And that's amazing to me. And that's the synergy that both, you know, that I have personally and our, our foundation, along with the James Beard Foundation, is so important building inroads to really making a difference through food in our country is too important. When you mention your foundation, and of course this is the James Beard Foundation, which is celebrating its... 30th anniversary this fall. Wow, yes. wow. Your foundation parallels in so many ways the James Beard Foundation in that you celebrate culinary history, traditions, and your culinary history and traditions stem from New Orleans. That's right. In order to pay homage to this great city, we wanted to, I, I believe in leaving uh, something in a better place than when you found it. And so we've been through a lot over the years with hurricanes and whatnot. And so we created this Mar Foundation to make sure that inner city kids had a shot at a great culinary uh, education up here in New York. And so, which works, dovetails perfectly with our, my relationship over the past two decades with the the Beard Foundation, because Beard Foundation is all about perpetuating our food culture. And, and to have these think tanks that Susan's come up with, with to affect food policy, to early childhood food education initiatives, to um, using it as a conduit to bring great chefs together and, and, and raise money for these different charities or charitable purposes of the foundation is very, very important. And I'm just honored to be a part of it. Bringing great chefs together, we have over 40. Yes, we do today. Yeah. Great sponsors who are part of this great event. Well, you know, you can have a foundation, and John knows this without a great board of trustees and great support from sponsors and people who really believe in what you're doing. And we're very lucky that uh, we have so many great companies come out and support what we're doing. And of course, our hosts here at Wilfer Estate Vineyards serving their incredible wines. And of course, you know, we call it chefs and champagne, so we always need a great champagne. And Champagne Baron de Rothschild, well, that's one of the best champagnes around. So people are going to, no one's going to be thirsty going home tonight or hungry. There's worse ways of enjoying ourselves out here in the Hamptons, right? Well, a big night ahead, 40 chefs sharing the stage, but our honoree, congratulations and all the great work your foundation does, and of course, the James Beard Foundation. It's chefs and champagne, and it wouldn't be chefs and champagne without this marvelous, fantastic champagne. I'm with Frederick Mares. Yes, that's right. And Frederick, you are with Champagne Baron de Rothschild, our premier champagne this evening. Yeah. Thank you for being a sponsor. Yes, I'm, you are lovely to be there. You know, I'm so glad to share with you this beautiful event because the Rothschild you know, family is a dynasty. And in the wine, it's an it's amazing family, but in the champagne too now. And we are very glad to be part of this event. Um, you know, to be, to be close to the chef, you know, of all the America. Uh, and the North America, it's a, it's a pleasure, for, pleasure for us. And we are also pleased to, um, to be, you know, partner with the Premium Chef because we do as a maximum of Premium Champagne too, you know. A little bit about the company for those who 
have been living on another planet. And so, yes, uh, the company is based in Champagne, of course, you know, in the, in the Côte des Blancs, where we are, you can find the best Chardonnay. But um, the main uh, important thing to, to, do, to do is uh, that we are with the three Rothschild, with Benjamin, uh, with the owner of the bank, and also Chateau Clark, Eric, with the, the owner of Chateau Lafitte, and Philippe with the owner of Chateau Mouton Rothschild. So we have the three Rothschild in the same bottle. That means that the expectation of the quality is so high, so we try to do the best job you know, that you can find in Champagne for all the cuvées that we do. It's, uh, it's amazing. Well, this is the premier culinary event in the Hamptons, one of the largest events held by the James Beard Foundation. And for your Champagne to be selected, to be part of this, for your sponsorship, you're going to guarantee for all of us who are here a great evening. Yes, I hope so. You know, we, we put a lot of bottled champagne in the fridge, so I hope so that we can have you know, uh, the volumes to, to pour you know, everybody and to be enjoyed with everybody. But uh, 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 again, you know, um, it's so a pleasure to, to share you know, this champagne with uh, all these uh, people who are aficionados of the good food and the good wine and the good champagne. That's a, a pleasure for us to, to, to share that. You know. To Baron de Rothschild. And hold the champagne of the chef you know, today. Yes. Thank you, sir. Cheers. Fantastic. Oh. <laughs>
My friend uh, Ahmed here says you've got to check oh, out. How are you, man? He's one of your greatest fans. Awesome. So tell us, uh, what, what's your name, sir? Ralph Perazzo from BBD's restaurant, Rocky Point, New York. Rocky Point, we're fantastic. On the, we're on the North Shore, right on Long Island. Wow, so local, Long Island. The burgers, What? tell me, why is it such a sensation? Uh, we, we only use prime beef at BBD's, and we butcher whole steer. So uh, we actually get cattle in whole and break it down and sell primals and then uh, butcher and grind in-house. A little bit about yourself, to be honored by the uh, James Beard Foundation Chefs and Champagne to oh, be here. Oh, wow. I've done a lot of James Beard dinners over my career, and uh, I own my own place in New York now. We won the Rachel Ray Burger Bash last year in New York City for the Food and Wine Festival. So uh, James Beard wanted us to bring one of our burgers from the restaurants. We decided to bring a little griddle burger with uh, uh, fast food pickles and special sauce. All right, let's take a look. Yeah. So the, the burgers are all set. Hey, Samantha, you want to give the gentleman one of those burgers? Let's take a look here. Very simple thing. It's prime beef, um, special sauce, fast food pickles, caramelized onions and onion you juice. You sure, that. sure, well, sure. Caramelized okay. onions and onions juice. I never passed up a burger that I, <laughs> I didn't like. Wow, well, this is a lot of flavor, like two or three nice bites. Size there too. Uh, nice oh. and juicy, huh? Exquisite. Yeah. So what we're doing? We're, we're, we're cooking fresh, as you can see. Everything's a la minute. So as oh, soon wow. as it gets to the uh, guest's hands, it's super fresh. Wow. Nothing is pre-cooked. We have fresh heirloom tomatoes from the North Fork. Oh, the heirloom. If you want to look over here, here's, here's some of the tomatoes. Wow, wow. I mean, you guys are, are doing it right. You're putting it all together. Do you have a website? or? We do. Uh, EatBBDs.com. Um, please follow us on social media. We have a great following all over the country. Wow. And we're expanding to the West Coast soon. Wow, this is worth the trip from anywhere. Thank you Come so much. Come to, uh, to your restaurant in Rocky Point. Rocky Point, New York. Fantastic. A lot of people from the James Beard Foundation make this night possible, and this lady is first and foremost. Uh, We've been working with you for a number of years. That's right. It's Yvonne Ross, who is the director of uh, events yeah. and sponsorship. Mm, yes, correct. Wow, wow, wow. This is a big event, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. This is one of our favorites. It's really our favorite event in the summertime, and we just love to come out here and see everybody and see old friends and make new friends so we're really delighted to be here and we are delighted it, to be it's not only with delicious you. but it's successful isn't yes it, it is yes it is thank god and the, the event such as this brings money in for the foundation yes we, with uh, scholarships right yes yes we raise money for local scholarships and national scholarships and uh, as a matter of fact we have our largest scholarship um, uh, this year, over $700,000, so we're very proud of that. Wow. And we can do that because of events like this. Events like this. Mm -hmm. yes. Tell us about yourself, Yvonne. When did you come to be part of uh, the James Beard Foundation? Well, I've been with the foundation for 23 years. I started as a volunteer, which a lot of us do. And uh, I've been with the foundation since. And love every minute of it. Okay, now you know these events, because James Beard Foundation holds events all over the United States. Mm -hmm. Yes. Major, major events. Mm -hmm. What, uh, give us some tips. What sort of food should we be uh, should we be looking out for? Is there anything that that uh, sparks your interest? You know, you need to try all of it. It's all of it is so good, and um, it's you you can make it all. It's a long event. You can make it all. And I well, we're going to work our way. Do all of it. I just had a burger, yes, and it was there fantastic. You go. There you go. There's some great burger over there. <laughs> a good shrimp over here. Lots of good stuff. And great champagne. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, indeed. Well, thank you and well, all of you. your staff. You, thank you, you. You all help us to produce a great event here for television so our viewers who are home could, could enjoy this. But the James Beard Foundation is first and foremost in the culinary world. Well, thank you very much. We're very proud of, we're very proud to have that role. Got it? Got it, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, thank you. Okay, How Chef, are you? Chef Jay? Dakoti. Dakoti. Yes, sir. Well, a, I tell you, it's a, a sensation around your table here. Yeah. Welcome to Chefs and Champagne. Thank you very much. Tell us about yourself. Well, my name is Jay Dakoti. I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I eat and drink for a living, which is uh, one of the best jobs you could ever have in Louisiana. Wow. Our, our culture revolves around food and beverage, and uh, it's really what I do is celebrate uh, that food and beverage culture of Louisiana. Um, I, I do a lot of food writing, radio, TV stuff. I was on Food Network Star last year. I'm uh, working on a show on Travel Channel right now. Hopefully it gets picked up called Deep Fried America. Um, just all over the place, just celebrating life and food. Wow. 
It's all good, right? It's all it's all great. Now, you know, it's great to be in New York this time of year. As hot as it might be in the Hamptons today, it's even hotter back in Louisiana. So I'm happy to be here. I got to cook at the James Beard House in, in Manhattan two days ago. Now we're out in the Hamptons for Chefs and Champagne. Uh, it's really an honor to be able to work with the James Beard Foundation and do everything that we get to do for Tell them. Tell us, what did you bring uh, to our guests? Yeah, here? so everything that we're cooking today we brought in from Louisiana. And what we have here is a Cajun Tasso corn mock shoe. So it's like a little corn relish. It's uh, corn and onion and jalapeno and garlic and then cooked down with butter and cream with white wine topped with a pickled shrimp that's uh, Louisiana seafood and then a, a, it's got a, a serrano pepper right on top just to add a little bit of heat to it. So this is Louisiana flavor. It, it's, it's a completely Louisiana dish. We brought in the corn, we brought in the shrimp, we brought in every component of this dish from Louisiana uh, just so we could give that flavor to everybody here in New York. Okay, I'm going to try one. Absolutely, please do. Chef, hold that for me. Yeah, you got it. I'll, I'll be the host now. So you got to tell me what you think. Everything that you said about eating, drinking, and uh, enjoying food and life for a living, I concur with you. So. Right, right on. So look, somebody's got to do it. It's a hard job sometimes, but all right, you went for the corn first without going for the shrimp. Both of these are served chilled today, just to be nice and refreshing yeah. for summertime. The chill, definitely. Now the shrimp. Oh, magnificent. And it has like a lemony under flavor to it. I, I, you yeah. know, I, the, to so, describe it does not do it justice. Well, I, I, I appreciate that. The, the acidity that you get there that you might pick up as lemon flavor is everything that's in our pickle brine. So we pickle the shrimp for about an hour uh, and actually we poach them and then shock them in an ice cold pickling liquid. So it just soaks in that vinegar and the, all the spices and seasonings that we have in the pickling brine. And uh, that's what gives the shrimp Chef, all that flavor. Where's your restaurant? Do you have a website? I do. I have multiple websites. Uh, my, my food and beverage media company is called Bite and Booze. It's biteandbooze.com and Bite and Booze on all social media. I'm also on all the social media, Jay Dakota. If anybody just searches Jay Dakota uh, and jaydakota.com or on social media, you can find it that way. Uh, and then the restaurant that I have is actually not going to be opening until 2017. We're going to do a taco shop on Government Street in Baton Rouge called Government Taco. Uh, so that, that'll be a lot of fun when we do it. We're just going to be celebrating Louisiana flavors in the form of a taco. Louisiana flavor, very well represented. Thank you very here much. Here in the Hamptons at Chefs and Champagne. Thank you. I'm going to shake your hand. Awesome. But first, I'm going to finish this. Sounds good to me. <laughs> You know, it wouldn't be a Summer Hamptons event without a fabulous Frankfurter hot dog. Yeah, but I know this is above and beyond. This is Jonah Miller, who's from Manhattan. Yes, we have a Huertas restaurant in East Village. Yeah, we, we're serving a hot dog today, but it, we think it might be the best hot dog uh, out there, Hamptons or otherwise. So it's a Chistora sausage, which we make at the restaurant. We're a, a Spanish restaurant focusing on the north of Spain. So this is a Basque style sausage called Chistora. Uh, Marin's potato roll, we don't want to mess with uh, what works here back home, and aioli, piquillo mostarda, so it's, it's nice to give people, you know, a simple, really crowd-pleasing dish, and, you know, certainly a lot of chefs are cooking creative, interesting food here today, but we're really, you know, trying to hit a sweet spot. Well, there's a place. This is a work of art, because could you mention the ingredients that go into this? Sure. So the Chistora sausage we make at the restaurant, it's a pork sausage. We're using heritage pork shoulders, uh, some pimentone, lots of garlic and white wine. And the sausage is getting grilled back there. And then uh, just a classic potato roll from Martin's Potato Roll. And then um, a paquilla mustard, so paquilla peppers, mustard seeds, onions, garlic, and then an aioli. So, uh, uh, you know, all comes together for not a classic hot dog, but a delicious one. All right, it looks fantastic. Yeah, I'm take gonna, in, please. I'm going to take one of these. I can hold it for you if no, you want to. You're going to hold that. All right. So right now, you're going to be the guy who's holding the microphone. Will I enjoy this? Mm. Wow, all the flavors and, and that isn't, um, I mean, what is the topping? What is the uh, sauce? That's the paquilla mustarda there. So paquilla peppers, mustard wow, seeds, Dijon. Yeah. Check out this place. Flavor. Where yeah. are you again located? Uh, where it does is on uh, First Avenue between 6th and 7th Street in the East Village. Well, I'm pretty sure, you know, if if you guys were around when I was going to NYU, I'd be there every day. That's uh, my alma mater as well. So we'll see you down there right. at where it does when you're in the city next right. time. All right, Jonah Miller. Thank you. Looking good.
Chef Sherry Yard. I love that name. Thank you. It's it's very friendly, isn't it? And you've got a lot of fans. What we, is this? We call this Summer in a Cup. It's uh, Long Island raspberry strawberries, a vanilla gelato, raspberry sorbet, Earl Grey tea meringue. Excellent. Now, tell us about yourself. Well, I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. Moved out to California, worked with Wolfgang Puck for 20 years, and now I'm so excited to say that I'm coming back to New York, to the South Street Seaport in Fulton, to open up IPIC Cinemas and, and Fort Lee, New Jersey. Wow. So I oversee all their culinary. So you know when you like to dine in the dark? That's what we do. Well, a lot is happening at the, uh, at the seaport. It's very exciting. My grandfather was a fishmonger, so for me, to be able to come back there and prepare food that people can eat, and just have a decadent time. It's just thrilling for me. Well, thanks for being here. This looks spectacular. That's for you. And she's from Brooklyn. Well, from uh, thank Brooklyn. you so much. I'm from Brooklyn, too. <laughs> so I will enjoy this and uh, come and visit you guys when you're at the uh, South Street October. It's coming up quick. It's going to be big. Thank you. Fantastic. <music> Natalie Carpenter of Audi of America. So great to have you here and an important sponsor of Chefs and Champagne. Thank you. It's Say hello to, to all of our viewers. Hello, thank you. It's lovely to be here with you. And wouldn't you rather have an Audi, that's for sure, you know? Why don't you already have one? I already have one, well, but so uh, then I'm, I'm preaching fabulous, to the choir. fabulous motor car and what goes into it when you buy it and its sustainability over the years built right to begin with. So Chefs and Champagne, it, it's a good fit, isn't it? Chefs and Champagne has been an incredible fit for us. Uh, this is our third year involved. Um, culinary is a huge platform for us. It's an important opportunity for us to express our interest in lifestyle, um, artistic sensibilities, and uh, we find that culinary and Audi has that synergy um, that just transgresses into the consumer lifestyle experience. People who love quality, people who want the better things, and that's what your, your company represents. Earlier today, you were offering test drives for anyone who wanted, and I'm glad you do that before they imbibe our uh, Baron de Rothschild champagne here. And we wristband. It's incredibly important that although we provide test drives, it, has, it is done safely. Um, we are very corporately responsible. We never want to put anyone here or out on the road at risk. No, none was, would happen, and what a beautiful place to test drive an, uh, an Audi. So what's, what's new with the company? You guys have been around a lot of years, but those innovations keep coming. So this year, we have launched multiple vehicles. We have launched the 2017 Audi A4 sedan. Uh, we have also launched the 2017 R8 sports car. And we just recently also launched the 2017 Q7 SUV in January. Well, thank you for being part of Chefs in Champagne. We hope that association continues for years and years to come. Thank you. You add to our beautiful food with spectacular vehicles from, thank uh, from Audi. Thank you. And this one in front of us here, what is this? This is an Audi R8. This is that car that I just mentioned launched this year, um, actually in May to be exact. And uh, we are about mm, 80, 85 percent sold at this point in this year. Um, it has done tremendously well. It has been incredibly successful, and it is our halo vehicle. It's amazing. It's just launched this year. Our TV station is uh, one of the TV stations for the New York uh, Auto Show. Oh, fantastic! So we cover that in April, and I recall seeing your this vehicle there as part of the show and. I got to know that 85% are sold out already. Anyone who loves quality, this is uh, a must have. Absolutely, and it's racing heritage. You know. And what are we looking at there, Neville? That is the RS7. Um, this beautiful vehicle has actually, it's not new this year, but it is an absolutely stunning vehicle. Um, it is part of our sport uh, collection. Perfect for the Hamptons. I mean, you or can fit, Manhattan. Or, or Manhattan. Or, <laughs> it goes everywhere. It's your perfect everywhere car. Well, thank you for your thank time you so and thank much. you for your sponsorship. Thank you. Much appreciated. Chefs and Champagne. All the money goes to 
maintaining the foundation and all the good work, the scholarships, the educational programs, and it's because of sponsors like Audi America. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we love being here. Angie Marr, you've got something great cooking here. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. So, uh, for, for Chefs in Champagne, we decided to do a little bit of 60-day dry ribeyes. We roasted them in the coals. Um, and we're serving it with a little bit of rhubarb mustarda, garlic confit, and mint. Angie, where, where do you hail from? What? Uh, we are in New York. We're based in the West Village. Um, our restaurant's the Beatrice Inn. It's on West 4th and West 12th. So a lot of interest in this type. And you mentioned 60... 60 60-day dry age. Wow. Yeah, we do a lot of dry aging in-house. Oh, wow. Wow. Well, I'm going to take one because they're going Good. so quickly. you got to do it. They're going so quickly, and I'm going to try one of these. All right. Um, hold on. Just get in there. I love it. Can I do it? Is do this... it. Just do it. Would you like a ribeye bone, too? Uh, no, not now. But I'm <laughs> Maybe stuck. for dessert, right? Oh, my. What do you think? Wow. It has a flavor, I mean, 60-day aging. There it's is like a reason why they deep, age. It's deep, it's funky, it's like really just beefy and robust. Wow. Something to experience. The Beatrice Inn. The Beatrice Inn. Beatrice Inn, and it's Angie Marr. Yes. All right, guys. You know what to do. Angie, this is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. Summer and grilling. Wow. Those are massive <laughs> and perfect. They are. Cooked. They are. Perfect, medium, rare. Perfect. Never turn out that way when I do it. <laughs> well, you'll have to come hang at my restaurant with me then sometime. It would be a pleasure. And you're cooking for a 1,000 people here. We are cooking for a 1,000 people today, yeah. We are. It's wow. a lot of fun. Wow. It's such a great event, and it's such a great cause. So Alrighty. we're really excited to be here. With Chef Tim Cushman. Yes. Tim, where do you come from? Uh, originally from Boston, but we have our restaurant in New York. We have a couple restaurants in New York and Manhattan. So what did you bring our guests today? Today we have a Japanese fish. It's a sashimi. It's called kampachi. It's very similar to yellowtail or hamachi. And uh, we thought it was a very hot day, so we've used some Vietnamese flavors with it. Um, a little bit of Thai chili, Thai basil. Um, even though it's Vietnamese, but those are used in Vietnamese cooking. We also have uh, shallots, fresh shallots, and um, a little bit of our soy sauce. So your training, uh, Chef uh, Tim Cushman, where, how did you get into this? Uh, well, I'm self-taught. i uh, originally from Boston. I graduated from Berklee College of Music in Boston and moved to Los Angeles for the music business. And classic story, got a job in a restaurant to pay my bills while I was looking for a, a band. And uh, just here I am today. All right. Well, you're bringing something different. You've got a thousand plus guests here. So yes. to make a statement with that many people who know good food is uh, a major accomplishment. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's great to be here. Well, congratulations on being selected to be part of this oh, event. Yeah, well, we're so happy to be here. Having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> But we're at Wolfer Estates, the site of this great event, Chefs in Champagne. I know, I love Chefs in Champagne. It is my second most favorite event in the Hamptons each summer, right after the Hampton Classic. Right, so it's Wolfer Estate, right? Wolfer Estate Vineyards, Wolfer Estate Stables, that's correct. All right, well, given that we're in front of... Uh, where, where did he go? Sam went away. <laughs> there was a Clydesdale behind us just a moment ago. And actually, um, I don't think this is the Clydesdale, but there's another Clydesdale that's shown at the Hampton Classic on our opening day, a few, the same owner, um, a few years. But I don't know if they're riding here, there this well, year. Well, if you love horses, it's the Hampton Classic Horse Show. We're so proud to be part of it with you for a good number of years. But what year are we celebrating for the this Hampton Classic? 40, this is our 41st year of the Hampton Classic. And the dates are? August 28th through September 4th. For our viewers, if you have an opportunity to come to Bridgehampton, it is the premier equestrian event. But it, to me, it's the premier family event, Absolutely. premier social event. It's off the scale on every level. And every year, you and your 
wonderful staff pull it all together. We have a great team and there's something really for everyone. I think you're absolutely right. It's a family event. We have about 1,600 horses that compete for more than $800,000 in prize money over the course of the eight days. We have a petting zoo. We have kids activities. We have more than 80 shops. It's lots of fun for everyone. Shopping is Tremendous, that's for sure. So tell me, what uh, uh, what would be new for this year? What do we well, what do we have? Well, it's an Olympic year, as you know. So we're really excited to be um, the first event back after the Rio Olympics. McLean Ward and BZ Madden are both, um, we're expecting to see both of them at the Hampton Classic this year. They're both showing on the U.S. team in Rio. Um, Daniel Blumen, who's riding for Columbia at the Olympics, will also be riding at the Hampton Classic this year. So we'll have a number of, we have a lot of other former Olympians, but we'll have um, three at least that have will have just finished up in Rio. Um, our Grand Prix is up to $300,000 in prize wow. money. The um, Highest ever. Yeah, that's our highest ever. It's the Hampton Classic Grand Prix presented by Long Jean, and they're giving now a timepiece for first, second, and third place in that class, so that'll be fun for those riders. Wow. This is why it attracts the top riders from all over the world. But for our viewers, come to the Hampton Classic Horse Show. Enjoy the event. When you're not at the event, watch TV watch Hampton's absolutely, television? Absolutely, we, we live stream. We have um, VVH, Hampton's television, yes. our wonderful partner of many, many years. And so people can view it if they're not at the show or they can come to the show and then go home and watch your free rebroadcast and look for themselves. And bring those the credit coverage. cards. Yes, exactly. A lot of great shopping. Buy exactly. your Christmas gifts, Hanukkah gifts, every type of gift possible. Absolutely. Thank you, Shanet. Thanks for the great work that you guys Thanks do. Thanks so much, Ernie. We love the partnership with um, WVVH, and we're looking forward to seeing you in about a month. And we'll see you at Clydesdale there also, if we could ever find hopefully, them. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs>
uh, common items and created something that's very different to a whole new level. Tell Thank us you. about yourself, Chef. Uh, I am from Korea. Uh, I've been here in uh, U.S. like 11 years now, and I uh, end up with the modern, uh, which is like my second year anniversary is coming soon. Uh, I'm really enjoying like at working at the modern, and uh, we are working on uh, kind of like a creating new style of the food in America, like American new cultured food. Wow. So the modern, we've heard great things about the modern on Thank 53rd you. Street, and there's a reason why the pastries are very world-renowned, and it's because of you, Chef. So, uh, Thank you so much. We invite our, uh, our viewers, check this out. It's wow, this is spectacular. Excellent. It's very nice taste. Mm. Uh, you're going to try different cuisine in one time. You know, sweet, dessert. Berries. And, and everything really amazing. You know, it's very, very, very good beautiful. cuisine. You know, you choose whatever you like. I'm hanging out with a very fun person here. You bring your own beer. That's right, I'm a you beer You bring chick. a party, <laughs> I tell you. Christina Perosi Very good, yes. Goose Island. Goose Island Beer Company out of Chicago, Illinois. All right. Uh, we are here to prove that beer deserves a place in the fine dining environment, and it deserves to be alongside of another good bubbly beverage. Oh, absolutely. Champagne. Well, most people don't know this, but uh, James Beard was a regular guy. He celebrated real food. So he did. a beer and great food, a burger. I saw some hot dogs being cooked up earlier. I had one of those hot dogs and it was delicious and it paired perfectly with beer. And I will tell you that most of the chefs here already have come and had a beer. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. One of the chefs asked me earlier, where can I get a great beer? Now I have an answer. <laughs> That's right. So tell us, what's a Sophie? What is uh, the so, Sophie? So Sophie's a Belgian style farmhouse ale. So it's a little bit more rustic. It's very effervescent. Um, we actually age it in French oak. And then we add a little bit of orange peel. So it's aged with citrus. Um, the yeast that we use is called saison yeast, which means season in French. It's has notes of black pepper, a uh, little bit of funkiness, like an old world Pinot Noir. It's just this really delicious beer that goes with any kind of food. We're actually pairing it, we're working with Paul Kahn, who's right behind me, James Beard Award winning chef. And we are pairing the Sophie with the dish that he's making with octopus tonight. All right, we got to try that out also. Yes. Now where can our uh, viewers uh, find Sophie? Anywhere, we're, we're na nationally distributed now, so you can find it in a place like Whole Foods, you can probably find it in your local wine store now, local liquor stores, anywhere. Really special. Yes. All right, thanks for coming all the way from Chicago. I'm happy to, to be here. To Sagaponic and the Hamptons. It's been for tough, but. Chefs and Champagne. <laughs> and be proud, you're representing the, the beer lovers of, uh, of America tonight. That's right. Chef, I know you have a good partner in that great beer we just uh, interviewed, Sophie. Yeah, Goose Island from Chicago. All right, this is Paul Kahn. Paul, where are you from? Chicago. Chicago also. Welcome to the Hamptons. Tell good. us, what did you bring our, uh, our guest tonight? Uh, well, we're doing, uh, well, I brought Chef Perry Hendricks from one of our nine restaurants in Chicago. Uh, it's called wow. Avec. He's a good dude. Uh, a little, little fussy, but a good dude. Um, and we are, we are serving uh, octopus that's been braised in olive oil with sumac until it's super tender. And then we're garnishing that with cold watermelon and uh, blistered tomatoes that are all dressed with a burnt chili and lime vinaigrette. Wow. It's a mouthful, huh? It sure is, and it's... Tasty. It's tasty. Hamptons fresh. But you mentioned sumac, like sumac, sumac. Sumac, sumac, like sumac that you see the red plant on the side of the yeah. road. And uh, yeah, it's used a lot in Middle Eastern, Mediterranean cooking. Wow, wow. This is spectacular. You've, you've brought it up to a, to a whole new level. James Beard. Uh, Jim Beard. Tell, tell me about uh, your connection with Jim Beard. Uh, uh, is he know, as big in Chicago as he is here in, uh, in the Hamptons? Well, of course. You know, every person that's involved in the culinary arts and restaurants wants to win a James Beard Award. Um, and so, and, but really, most importantly, it's the educational culinary body. It's the governing culinary body in America. It drives great restaurants. It drives culinary education. Uh, a lot of other charitable pursuits, so it's a great um, organization to support. 
Uh, we are our restaurant group, myself, uh, chefs that work for me have uh, we've pulled down quite a few James Beard awards over the years. I'm proud to say, but uh, really, it's all it's all about the foundation and about teaching future generations uh, the power of food um, and health and how it affects our world. So, and James Beard loved good American food, yeah, whatever that might be. He brought it to the fore and he said it should be celebrated. So, uh, congratulations to you and your staff. Let me just get a word. And this is Perry. Perry. Hey, Perry. Good Hi, to how see are you? you. Welcome Good to, to the Hamptons. Oh, thanks for it. I know you guys are busy as all heck because <laughs> you've got a thousand people here that you're feeding. But tell us about yourself. How did you uh, learn to do what you do to become such a great chef? Uh, you know, it takes a lot of hard work, obviously, and, and basically just uh, a long time, a lot of work. Uh, keep on learning from great people like Paul and uh, always day, every day. You know, working harder and harder and learning more and more. You know, I think once you once you stop learning, you you just kind of plateau. But we're always trying to push ourselves for what's new and exciting and, and mostly delicious. So. Hampton's fresh. Hampton's Ham fresh. Absolutely. Montauk magic. That's what absolutely. we're after. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> two guys from Chicago bringing great great dish and octopus. So Perry, where is the octopus from? Well, you imported directly from Spain. Fantastic. Wow. Ah, chef, chef Kerry Heffernan, chef, congratulations on creating a masterpiece. Could Thank we, you. Can we tell our viewers what we're looking at? So we have two kinds of Long Island oysters: a Blue Point Number no. Nine, which is from probably less than 10 nautical miles from this very spot, um, and that's dressed with cucumber, ramp, and lemon, and a grilled oyster, a char grilled oyster, in honor of uh, honoree John Besh, and that's a Navy Point oyster from the North Shore of Long Island, which has been char-grilled with fennel, uh, espalette pepper, and tarragon. Local Long Island oysters here at this local Long Island event. Couldn't be any better. Chef's world-class event, no doubt. World-class for sure. I've been doing it for about 15 years, and I'm happy to be back again. Tell us about yourself, Chef Kerry. So um, I run something called Grand Banks. It's a maritime history and sustainable uh, seafood bar located on a 140-foot vessel in the Hudson River in New York City. And we feature local sustainable seafood, you know, not only Long Island oysters, three to four kinds a day, um, as well as we work with local fishermen to make sure that we're using sustainable species like porgy and bluefish, um, fluke, black sea bass, even sea robins, even whelks, things that are underappreciated and underutilized. We're looking to sort of cut our dependency on some of the big three, you know, tuna, shrimp, and salmon, but even striped bass, which locally were once plentiful, and I see actually us on the decline right now. So I'm trying to convince fishermen to, to sell me things like porgy and bluefish, which they'll take better care of, and I'll pay them more for, and sort of leave the striped bass alone for a while until the numbers recuperate. You're what the uh, James Beard Foundation is all about, bringing education, love of, of food, knowledge and education to food and by bringing that to the public and we all share in your uh, spectacular dishes uh, everybody wins we think so i'd like you to win right now i will win with this <laughs> thank you chef me, kerry you, i will yeah i'm gonna hold that i'm gonna hold i'm gonna able, hold this and do commentary well you're ably qualified <laughs> you've had a career in, uh, in broadcasting so that's as i said a blue on number nine a local cultured oyster that we get from Blue Island Oysters. It's an amazing purveyor. So bright, fresh, vegetal, you're wow. getting that ramp, but you're not overwhelming the oyster. You can still taste the oyster. I don't like the preparations that, you know, overwhelm the subtleties of the local product. And that fresh under... That ramp mignonette. A little bit of vinegar, a little bit of ramps and onions. The word is ramp, and this... And, and, that, and that's the grill. That's a wild harvest uh, North North Shore oyster uh, from between Port Jefferson and um, Old, Old Field Harbor. Um, I've actually gone diving for these things. And the, the population of wild Long Island oysters in that area is phenomenal. There are guys diving and raking oysters 365 days a year. 
serious crunch factor with that. There's a it's crunch. So the, the, the penko and the fennel, you know, sort of do you have a vegetal crunch from the from the veg, the penko, the uh, fennel, and then that sort of bready crunch from the, the panko. But not too much. Again, we don't want to overwhelm the protein, we want to highlight these great local sustainable ingredients. Do you have a website? We do. Uh, oh sorry. <laughs> uh, grandbanks.org would be the best way to go. Grandbanks.org. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, Antigua and Barbuda is represented here, the Department of Tourism. Correct. Antigua and Barbuda. Barbuda. Yes, and sir. And the islands have come to Long Island. Yes, sir. Antigua and Barbuda has come to Long Island. We have 365 beautiful beaches, one for every day of the year. So come on down and see us. All right, so you. this is Dean Fenton and this is Ralph uh, This John. is Ralph John. Now, Ralph, you're an actor. We know that. Aspiring actor, my bro. One day you will see me on stage getting that Oscar. Well, I'm an uh, aspiring reporter, so... I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm not aspiring to anything. I'm just here to promote the destination and to bring all you beautiful people from Long Island. So what have you got for us? You'll get the first uh, interview. Um, wow. We have sorrel, which is a, an herb. And we have ginger beer. Oh, ginger beer. Yes, sir. Let's try one. Yeah. Would be my pleasure. And coming to an event like this here in Long Island, this is a major commitment for, for anyone to come, but it's important, isn't it? It's important. The people of Long Island have always supported Antigua and Barbuda. We have a lot of traffic out of this region coming to our island, so we only felt it was right to come back and give a little bit back to you guys. We brought some sunshine as usual and some great drinks from the destination as well. Well, we've got a lot of beaches, but we don't have 365. Wow, guys. Yes, sir. Tell you, I wouldn't be working. I'd be on a <laughs> different beach every day. Try that cocktail. Mocktail, I should say. Mocktail. To your health. Thank you for being part of Chefs and Champagne. Absolutely. Isn't that refreshing? Fantastic. And this is Sorrel. This is Sorrel. Wow, fantastic. And I welcome you to beautiful Wolfer Estate Vineyards and our 26th James Beard Foundation Chefs and Champagne Celebration. Woo! So for over 26 years now, we have been honoring some of the greatest culinary stars in our country. From Wolfgang Puck and Emerald, to Julia Child, Last year, Carla Hall, at what we think is the best party in the Hamptons, the best food and wine tasting party in the Hamptons. And it's especially exciting and special today to be honoring Chef John Besh, one of America's best loved chefs. And John is also a really great friend of the James Beard Foundation. John is a multiple James Beard Award winning chef. He has been inducted into the James Beard Who's Who in Food and Beverage in America. He was named Best Chef Southeast. He's the chef owner of 12 restaurants, uh, including August, which was named one of the most outstanding restaurants in America. And he's the author of four cookbooks. Many of you have watched him teach America and families how to cook on his PBS television shows, John Besh's New Orleans and John Besh Family Table, based on his four cookbooks. John has dedicated his career to giving back, to also celebrating the bounty and traditions of his native Southern Louisiana. And actually five years ago, he started the John Besh Foundation, which focuses on minority culinary scholarships and mentorships. And he also gives, through his foundation, microloans to farmers. And in fact, one of their scholarship recipients, Delvin Davis, is cooking tonight at at uh, Luxanne's Pulance's table, so you should check that out later, but not right now. Stay right where you are. Um, and before we raise a glass of champagne, wine, to toast our wonderful honoree, we must, I must thank our sponsors. First of all, Wolfer Estate Vineyard. Uh, tonight we have the general manager, Max Rohn, with us. And uh, the late Christian Wolfer's family, some of them are with us tonight. Mark and Joey, uh, they're here somewhere, I want to thank them. And of course, Wolfer Estate's partner and winemaker, Roman, Roman Roth. <laughs> We're also so delighted to have 
over 40 of our country's best chefs, creating delicious tastings for all of us around the tent. And we, we will be introducing all of these talented chefs, men and women, later on today, in about an hour or so. You know, Mark Twain once said, too much of anything is bad, but too much champagne, and I'll add wine, is just right. <laughs> And I want to also mention uh, some of our sponsors that we really must thank tonight. Wolfer Estate Vineyard, of course, for their incredible exclusive wines and ciders this evening. Thank you, Roman. And I also want to thank Federic Lorez and the wonderful Champagne Baron de Rothschild for the incredible tastings of your champagne that we're all enjoying this evening. And many other sponsors, including Antigua Barbuda, Audi, Badois, Evian, Goku Kuya, Goose Island Beer Company, Hamptons Magazine, My, Melissa's, Royal Cup, Co Royal Cup Coffee and Tea, Sturia Caviar, Tito's Handmade Vodka, Gerterra Dinnerware, BBH TV Hamptons, as well as our VIP after party sponsor, Newman's Kitchen Events and Catering, and our supporters, Chef Rare, Fossil Farm, Sag Harbor Flowers, and special thanks, of course, to Lennox Tableware and Gifts. And our wonderful Chefs and Champagne host committee. We have four people who have really helped us sell and get great auction items. Todd Buchanan, Nicole Delma, who's here with her adorable daughter, Laura Goodman, and Heath Miller. Many of you may know that this is truly a party with a purpose by joining us today and bidding on the silent auction items in the middle of the room. You are helping our foundation raise uh, important funds for our mission, thought leadership mission and our scholarship and other important missions of the foundation. And I hope that you will bid generously and enjoy some great bargains in the meantime. I'm also very proud of the fact that since 1991, we've awarded $6.5 million in scholarships and financial aid. And for 10 years now, We've awarded a scholarship to, uh, in honor of the late Christian Wolfer, and I want to introduce two scholarship recipients. First, Evelyn Grant, who receives our Christian Wolfer, Wolfer Scholarship this year. Evelyn is a former food and nutrition teacher, and she's getting her master's degree in science so she can continue. She wants to educate the youth about good nutrition, good diet, and we just want to congratulate her on receiving this year's Christian Wolfer Scholarship. Evelyn Grant. And some of you who have been with us year over year know that we have a, a scholarship alumni with us, Christina Castle of Sagaponic, and she is actually teaching um, based on her James Beard scholarships and other education and eighth, eighth graders in uh, Southampton's Intermediate School. So Christina, it's always nice to have you here with us. Thank you. Some of you may have heard once that the poet laureate, Charles Simic, who was really known for writing positive, happy poetry was asked by the New York Times, what's the secret to happiness? And this poet said simply, learn how to cook. Well, I know scholarships like ours certainly increase the happiness of the scholarship recipients who are teaching America how to cook, but certainly tonight's honoree, Chef John Besh, for the work that he's doing on television and in the media teaching Americans how to cook also increasing happiness and good health in this country. So John, please join me up here. We do have some special gifts for you. You will get them after tonight's wonderful tastings. But I also just want to say that based on the crowd here and the fact that you've always said yes when we ask you to do something, uh, no wonder you're one of America's most admired chefs. So thank you for being with us and thank you all for honoring John and the chefs who have turned out today. And I'll give, turn over the microphone to John to say a few words. contingency right here, but um, just really wanted to say, uh, leave you with a couple things. One, Susan, thank you so much for the generosity of uh, bestowing this upon me today. But as a chef, I feel blessed. I feel blessed to be surrounded by such great people that are here tonight, the 40 chefs that are here, helping to raise money to do good. Um, it's been my honor to be surrounded by great people. I have my wife, Jennifer. Jen, raise your hand. 
James, back me up. Octavio, Miguel Aron Sanchez, our newest member of the, of the New Orleans uh, culinary team. And it takes a team to do this. And the interesting thing is, I do get to make people happy through food. That's what we do for a living. My, uh, people always ask me, what do you like? What's your favorite dish? And the truth is, making people happy, using food, using drink, using hospitality. And at the same time, doing good with that, using food to do good. I admire Susan so much for what she's done through the Beer Foundation by offering scholarship and outreach programs and really doing things that make a difference, doing things that make, using food to make the world a better place. That's what this is all about. You're helping us do that tonight. Bless you, and thanks for honoring me. Appreciate it. We have New Orleans represented in the house, and this is Jennifer Besch. You were cited from the stage for your accomplishments and in, in helping your husband's uh, career, being part of it. What's it like being a part of the Besh conglomerate entrepreneur business? It's amazing, and it's great to be here with John. I'm so proud of him and proud that he's being honored by the James Beard Foundation. It's a spectacular night. Well. Wow. 12 restaurants growing. I think there's going to be a new one in New Orleans. No, in Houston, right? A new one in Houston and Nashville's coming up too, so it's we gotta expanding. Bring you, yeah. Got to bring you to the Hamptons also. Right. Now, tell us about your group that came up uh, with you guys from New Orleans. Okay, we got um, Caroline Rosen, who runs the John Besh Foundation. Thank you. Aaron Sanchez, his partner, and Johnny Sanchez, Melanie. Mayor Drew is, I don't even, Drew, what's your title now? He's the direct, director of operations. Director of operations for the John Besh Restaurant Group. So there's a foundation, there are numerous restaurants, there are, I know at least of two or three TV shows. Right. I mean, it's amazing. You guys are constantly busy. But the foundation interests us very much because yeah. we recently covered the uh, James Hemming event at, at the, we uh, and you guys were there and John yeah. was there. And your foundation is a strong uh, proponent of uh, local chefs and the history of cooking in America. It is, and it's about cultivating and continuing to entertain, to get people around the table, to making sure that we're all together like we are tonight. And that's the best thing about John, Jennifer, this entire restaurant group around, and all of our friends and family is that we're able to come together and give back. And that's what we do at the Best Restaurant Group and with the Best Foundation is we try to make sure that we're able to get people together and join around that family table. You guys are doing, you're rewriting the book on this. I've never met, and we've had over the years, Martha Stewart, uh, every chef that could be imagined, uh, Wolfgang Puck, uh, Emeril was right. here. But to see anyone that has a foundation and what is your role in the company? Uh, no, I'm just I'm partners with John Besh uh, in a restaurant called Johnny Sanchez. So his first name and my last name. Wow. And, it, and it's a restaurant born out of friendship and admiration and love. And uh, that's why we're bringing Mexican food to New Orleans. And I'm helping with that process. And our operations person, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. And what, are, what do you do? What's operations? Well, I actually uh, run a few of the restaurants. I just run it from a number side. but. It's fun to be at these events because for years, I've been with John now for almost 20 years, and for years it's always been about stewardship and giving back. And to see the foundation recognized and to hear about the microloans, and that's kind of what we're more proud of than anything. You know, it, the business side is fun, but it's the opportunity that we've been fortunate enough to give back to everybody that makes everything wonderful. You know, Jennifer, if John should ever decide to run for office, oh, he's God. got my vote. Because <laughs> he's got it all together. James Beard Award winner, Tim Cushman from Oya, Boston. Excellent. One round of excitement, yeah! Ha, ha, ha.